Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is not very comfortable. I've been in this place many times where you don't see the people that you're talking to. That goes a little bit with what um, we heard this morning from, from Charlie. Um, in fact, um, um, I'm very glad to be here. Um, I want to congratulate the organization for the excellent uh, speakers that we had before. Um, and uh, also to thank the organization for having me here. I've been in Estonia since 1994, and I've been working with several organizations here in Estonia, so I know the interest for education and training, how serious you are, and uh, the attendance in this room is really a proof of uh, the interest uh, this country places in education. So I hope my presentation will help you a little bit um, in your work towards uh, better teaching. Um, I'm, I'm going to address something that it's not very usual, which is uh, the assessment. Um, uh, we have a lot of, um, of um, work done on teaching tools and support and um, policies, etc. But we don't have man, much work about um, verifying the effectiveness of all these tools and all these strategies and all these techniques, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, this was a project um, that was uh, proposed to the European Commission. I was the coordinator, and that's probably why I was invited. ITSA uh, was the Estonian partner. Um, and the idea for this project uh, came from another project that we had before, which was called Virt Virtual. Virtual was a project on how to have um, uh, verification of the virtual uh, qualifications and competences people acquire in e-learning, and how can this recognize, be recognized by society in general by companies in particular, by professional associations, by uh, educational institutions. And uh, we verified in that project there is not much work done on assessment and on research on assessment of the effectiveness of all the subjects that uh, we've heard this morning and this afternoon. Um, just to tell you, I, I work with uh, several, well, two accreditation agencies, the National Accreditation Agency in Portugal and in Spain. And we have a lot of work to verify the quality of the programs that want to be accredited by these uh, national accreditation agencies. I know that in Estonia is a little bit different, but that's a major issue in Europe. Um, for the mobility purposes, you know, the European professional card and other, and the European qualification framework are uh, uh, initiatives from the European Commission that uh, imply with every teaching and training that we do all over the European Union. And um, for instance, there is now, starting in February, one big project by the Tuning Academy. For those who know, the Tuning Academy is a very serious organization that has been working uh, in terms of the learning outcomes <coughs> and subjects. In Europe, in different subjects, this project is called Kalohi, and I'm the coordinator of the engineering subject. There are five subjects. And this project, Kalohi, is uh, comparing and assessing learning outcomes in higher education in Europe. It has five subjects, like I mentioned. Uh, there's only one Estonian university involved. There are about 100 uh, institutions in Europe. It's the University of Applied Sciences here from Tallinn in engineering. And the purpose is precisely to verify all the learning outcomes that we say that uh, learners are supposed to acquire are really 
obtained by the learners. Um, so you see the interest um, that uh, is being placed on this issue because there's a lot of faith and hope in what we do uh, when we design the teaching strategies uh, but there's not so much on the verification of the effectiveness of that, those strategies. So, like I said, this um, project um, resulted... Let me see if this works. Yes. So, what should we assess? Um, learning outcomes, of course, the competences. Um, and what type of assessments are we going with? We just heard the question, the written test, that's usually what we do. Is that right to verify all the competences that people have? If you are familiar with the European Qualification Framework with the eight levels of qualification and the three categories of competences from knowledge, skills and attitudes, how do we verify those um, competences required by the European Qualification Framework to obtain one of these eight levels? How do we do this? Is a written test uh, enough? It's, uh, or it's an interview, it's an essay, it's a peer review, uh, it's a practical case. So that's precisely what was the topic of this uh, project. The project is just ended, ended in December, um, and uh, of course, content and didactics and strategies like you've been hearing the whole day and you probably were trained to do that. Um, how do we verify if it works, basically? So, this alignment was the big question that we had in this project. Uh, of course, the project was not um, um, out of the blue. I mean, we, we, we didn't uh, um, just had the idea of having it without background. The background, like I mentioned, was the one that uh, tried to verify the virtual qualifications of people that were trained with e-learning or distance learning or whatever you want to call it or self-learning, whatever you want to call it, doesn't exist. Uh, uh, let's say a framework to verify these competences. So in this Kalohi, for instance, this big project with, like I said, about a hundred universities um, and other uh, higher education institutions, there was no European solution. So they the resource they used was an American one, which you know, it's the educational ETS, the Educational Testing Services, that does the TOEFL and the GRE and the GMAT, all those tests that are recognized worldwide. And uh, because there was no European, maybe there's a business opportunity for you. Uh, there's no, uh, let's say, uh, in Europe, any that could fit this requirement with people with expertise in testing the competences um, for learners. Okay, um, like I said, these are the reasons that we were involved. The question of qualification, because if you look at the lifelong learning and the training, the vocational training, the continuing education, the professional development, etc. How do we verify that people really got the competences they were supposed to obtain? The recognition, and that's something that in Europe, it's... Um, uh, you, you don't know, you are probably teachers, but I work with a professional... I'm an engineer. Nobody is perfect, but anyway. I'm an engineer, and uh, I work with FEANI, which is the Federation of European professional organizations. I belong to the scientific committee. I'm deputy chair, by the way. And um, what happens is that we try to find ways to recognize the engineer competences so engineers can move freely in Europe. And um, 
It is a problem. You don't know, but it is. And uh, with what happens with engineering happens with a lot of other activities, uh, and it's necessary for uh, Europe to have this uh, recognition that is accepted by all countries. And the third is quality. In fact, we can say wonder wonderful things about the aesthetics, about uh, teaching and uh, MOOCs and whatever, but um, is this really of good quality? And quality agencies, and uh, either external or internal of the institutions, are worried about having uh, the right uh, learning outcomes, but especially, I'm a teacher for 40 years, okay? And I was a student for, I don't know, 17 or something. And uh, assessing is probably one of the most important um, parts of the game between teacher and student. Um, that's how you verify if they are qualified and they should pass or not, or fail the, the course. And that's very important. And we don't pay much attention to the choice of methods for assessment. And that's why we did this. And of course, this is for the interest of the students, of course, not, not for the interest of the, um, of the teachers. It's just uh, help for the teachers and course designers and accreditation agencies, whatever you want to, to apply. But it's especially for the benefit of the students and learners. Okay, we had some difficulty in finding uh, definitions. And uh, for instance, for the learning outcomes or the competences, we found um, uh, the definition from, whoops, sorry. We found a definition from the OECD. This is a project from the OECD. It's like a pizza uh, approach, you know, the pizza tests. And by the way, Estonia do, does very well generally on the pizza tests. But this is a, like a pizza test, but for higher education. They chose, uh, OECD chose engineering and business as their targets. They did it worldwide. And we chose precisely the definition of the OECD as what it is, learning outcomes. Okay? So it was not easy, but that's what we did. And that's uh, basically um, uh, what we used to, to build a program, etc. Assessment. Um, we used the definition of assessment by Brown and all. As a matter of fact, um, uh, the, the model that we use, and I'm going to talk about it, is based precisely on the theory by Brown et al. in the lining learning outcomes and modes of assessment. And for the e-assessment, because this was just for e-learning, when we implemented the project with um, the, the participants and everything, we noticed, and reflection among the partners, it was... There, there were two projects that I, I'm proud of, or, yeah, at least two. One was the first one that took me here to Estonia, that helped create the Continuing Education Center at Tallinn Technical University in 96, I guess. And the other is this one. Those were European projects where there is something that is tangible, and I believe it's useful. Besides, the partnership was also very good. We had a great time during these two years. But especially the outcomes of the project are, let's say, in my opinion, very useful. Okay, so since this was e-learning, what categories of assessment we use? We use multiple choice questions, short answer questions, problems, essays, practical work, reflective practice. These were the methods of assessment that we consider in this project. And of course, what we want is really to find the alignment between the learning outcomes, the assessment tasks, the activities for teaching and learning, and that's where the teachers, and I'm getting back to the presentations of this morning, the teachers are really the key issue. I, I, I don't see any learning. You, you know when Gutenberg invented the, 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 the printing, they said universities are dead and 
et cetera, et cetera. Well, they are still here. And uh, it's not only for research. Uh, so teachers are very important to decide the strategy behind teaching and learning activities. And of course, the way you write the intended learning outcomes for your modules, for your course programs, for your training, class, whatever you want to call it, are also important. So the alignment by Anderson et al, that was behind um, uh, what we did, um, is the correspondence between the objectives, instruction, and assessment. And that's where the teacher comes in. Um, of course, there are several scenarios where we have, in a discipline, in a training module, in whatever you want to call it, you may have, for instance, many learning outcomes and many types of assessment, or you just have the other way. You have just one learning outcome for the course and one uh, assessment method. That's not generally what happens. But anyway, this is the scenario where we created the tool that um, it is important. And I have more time in that clock than in mine, so it's good. Okay, so um, is this a simple problem? You think it is? We don't think so. We think that it's very difficult, and that's why not many people address it, um, unfortunately. Uh, we, it's, it's, it's true. Um, if you can provide me, and we did a lot of research, uh, uh, the partnership and before about this, there's not much work on that, and it's necessary to do something, and that's why we did it. Of course, like I said, this doesn't come out of the blue. We used a, a lower um, model, conceptual model, um, which is aligning learning outcomes with assessment. This model was created on a PhD thesis, uh, in a, it's a, a joint program between the University of Porto and the University of Texas in Austin. Um, I supervise that PhD, uh, and I challenge the student that it's now working in another university, is no longer working with us, um, to prepare this project. And of course, when doing this project, we decided to use the Bloom, the revised Bloom taxonomy, in terms of defining the learning outcomes for those who are familiar with the revised Bloom taxonomy. And, um, of course, we could have gone to the qualification frameworks, because that's what it was in the virtual project, where, in fact, we had uh, issues with, um, with the qualification frameworks and the, and the way to assess the requirements of the qualification frameworks. Um, you can have it in programs, but that's too complicated, but you can use it if you want. There's no reason why these two levels cannot be uh, used with this tool. It's up to, to, to you. But we use it just in courses, in mod modules. That's what we decided to use in the project. And of course, we had the e-assessment tasks, like I told you, but we, during um, the project, we decided to upgrade that just to assessment methods, because in fact, um, you can use it in e-learning, but you can use it also in face-to-face, -face, in blended, in flipped learning, whatever you, you, you want to talk about. And the problem is really to align the intended learning outcomes with the right assessment methods. Uh, let me tell you that this is not absolute truth. This is based on the revised Bloom Bloom tax taxonomy and the, 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 the work of Anderson and uh, Bloom of... Um, of Bloom and Anderson and Brown et al. But um, like I said, um, we have a lot of work in this issue of defining uh, how to write the learning outcomes. That's very difficult, let me tell you. It's very difficult to write learning outcomes. Like I said, uh, me as uh, evaluator of programs, either for at European level or at the national level, it's very difficult for teachers to write learning outcomes. So here we use the, uh, the help of uh, revised Bloom taxonomy where uh, you have a strong verb 
and you have um, uh, the noun that uh, in fact uh, expresses uh, the competence uh, that you suppose the learner is supposed to have. And um, we addressed um, on the revision and Anderson at all, we, you, we addressed the six levels of the revised Bloom taxonomy um, from uh, the most simple one. And that's interesting because most of the teachers only look at this. Don't take me wrong, but that's my experience. If you don't do it, that's great. But most of the teachers just look at this. Some use and understand, I think, the complexity and the sophistication of the cognitive process is create. That's the most difficult, from my point of view, the most difficult um, cognitive process to evaluate. But that's something that it's sometimes in the learning outcomes. If you look at the competencies, if you look at the European qualification framework, there are certain of them that involve creation. Okay? And for the type of knowledge, there are these four levels that were considered consider the factual, uh, the conceptual, procedural, and metacognitive. Now, for you, and that's what I think it can benefit um, this presentation um, and the tool, because you can use it, um, it's in fact, you have generally to uh, write the learning outcomes, then define the content, learning activities, and assessment. And, of course, this is what this tool, based on the Aloha conceptual model, the author was uh, Rita Falcão. She's um, uh, a teacher at the, open, uh, at the new university, the new university in Lisbon, right now. And um, this is what we use uh, in this tool based on the Aloha conceptual model. Okay. So, this project where I said ITSA was a partner uh, with uh, uh, seven other partners besides the University of Porto, which is my university, um, there was EDEN, the European Distance Education Network, and UCAN, which is the European Continuing Education Network, um, plus other, uh, there was one, one, one of the partners was a company, in charge of um, software that designed the software for the web tool. So it was a mixed partnership, very effective from the point of view of uh, reflection from a background, and also, and that's what I liked most, uh, for discussion among us and testing, and uh, it was very interesting. Um, of course, um, this is what we wanted, internal consistency. Uh, of the online uh, courses, and this is what we did. A web-based tool to help teachers and trainers decide on the e-assessment strategies to use in their online courses. And like it was mentioned this morning by Mark Norman, of course, the e will probably drop. I, I personally, I don't, I don't understand why the e is still there, but, but that's what it is. I mean, everybody says e-learning for me, it's learning, but anyway. Um, that's what it is. And this is a consortium, like I told you, um, from several countries. And ITSA is here. We have worked in other projects with ITSA. So this was another one, the Open University in Spain, etc. Okay, so we had the Bloom matrix. And like I said, we addressed only the, in terms of knowledge, the procedural and the conceptual knowledge in terms of the web tool that we designed. And um, for the cognitive processes, uh, we had this. So this is the revised Bloom matrix. Of course, this is ours. Uh, we had to decide which type of, um, of um, uh, processes could be assessed uh, in terms of finding the conceptual and the factual. You may change it. That's no, no problem. But that's what we used. And, um, this is the final result. I'm glad that I brought the slides because uh, I could show it on, on it's, it's for free, it's for everyone to use, it's paid with public money from the European Commission, so it's free, you can use it uh, the way you want and you need. And um, 
this is the, the web page uh, screenshot. Um, there are, and I never remember what's in there, but there's an explanation about the web tool. There's the assessment. Um, um, uh, explanation, uh, advice, writing the learning outcomes. There's a lot of um, um, material because that's not an easy issue. If you want to write the proper learning outcomes, even in terms of the European Qualification Framework or other frameworks that you are supposed to obey and to respect, it's not easy to write the learning outcomes. Of course, a description of the assessment methods, you find a lot of material. This um, screenshot was before because we have it in German and in French, but um, uh, most of the materials, especially the references, are in English because that's what it exists. It's most of the, of the materials are in English. There are a lot of case studies that we collected uh, during the project that you can verify. And if you want to add a case study, just let us know and we'll put it there. And of course, there's some help there. Um, and this is how you work. You start for writing here in the box, that's step one. You type your learning outcome. We had a, some discussion about uh, should we force the users to use the verbs from the revised Bloom taxonomy? And we said no, it's not fair. So uh, we allow in this web tool, so you can write the learning outcomes the way you want. After you do that, you have to ask for assessment advice. And like I said, you have here the six, whoops, sorry. You have here the six uh, levels of the cognitive processes. And for instance, if you choose remember, you have the options um, that are related with remember. In this case, recognizing or recalling, here's the definition. And of course, you um, can find, if we follow, for instance, for understand, you have uh, several options and you, we allowed only three. For each one of the category of the cognitive process, we just allow three. In the beginning, and I can tell you what went wrong, um, we had uh, no limit for the number of um, description or characterization of the cognitive process. But um, we allowed only three because when we tried to build or to apply the revised Bloom matrix, it didn't work very well because we had a lot of solutions and it was not easy to find the right assessment methods to use. So we only allow three, which are the most relevant for the learning outcome that you wrote. The learning outcome here, and we tried this with all, it's non-contextual because the revised Bloom taxonomy doesn't apply only to certain areas, to certain field areas. So we tried with several disciplines. Uh, and um, in this case, is students will be able to explain the function, structure, and components of the musculoskeletal system. So that's from uh, sports um, or medicine. I don't remember because we have several. So here you can choose the, 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 the like I said, the, 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 the methods concerning understand can be exemplifying, summarizing, or explaining that better fit the learning outcome that you want to uh, ask for advice. And um, if you also consider that for this learning outcome, uh, the cognitive process in terms of analyzing is also necessary, you can always also click it, and find between differentiating, organizing, or attributing the one that better fits the learning outcome, in this case, organizing. And um, then you just proceed and check the assessment methods that were proposed by the lower conceptual model. And here you go. Um, the three and only three assessment methods are coming, suggestions. In this case, they are all essays. Uh, describe, explain, speculative, and discuss. There are several other types of essays. But this is what it is supposed to the 
for, uh, present to you to choose uh, which type of essay you're going to use, or you can use the three, you can use uh, two of them. It's up to you, because the strategy is up to the teacher, to the course designer, or to the, uh, quality, uh, to the quality evaluator. But it's not up to the method. The method just proposed based on the Oloa model just proposes the possible or the recommended assessment methods. And um, for the essays, here are the several options, um, but then your strategy to do that, to define the content, to define the learning activities, to define the assessment tasks, is up to you. That's uh, not to this web tool. So, this is all I wanted to say. I hope you can try it at home or here. I'm here tomorrow if you have questions or comments or critics, go ahead. That's what I'm here for, and I'm happy to share this experience with you. Thank you. I hope that's not too, how do I say, too uh, difficult or disturbing go into the assessment, it seems like it, I hope not, because this is the question of, there's somebody there, thank you, because assessment is really crucial to all this game, to, to be honest, that's how we pass or fail the students, we give them a great incentives, go ahead please. Hello. Uh, I'm Svetlana Dechenka from uh, Las Namea Secondary School, ICT manager. Uh, I have question about uh, which type of assessment um, do secondary schools from Portugal use? Traditional assessment or formative assessment, uh, what type? And if uh, Portugal uh, schools are very strong in using of e-learning, um, maybe okay. they have used e-assessment also. Thank you. Sure. Um, I, I'm not a specialist on that, but I, I, I work with the office that produced this tool, and um, we, we, we give um, one of the courses we have, it's not a MOOC. I, I don't know how you say it's a MOOC, because MOOC depends on the dimension. But we have this um, training for uh, secondary and primary education. For we have an, um, an agreement, our university has an agreement with the Ministry of Education to train the teachers to use uh, these tools. Um, from what I know, um, we, we didn't, in this training, we didn't, we didn't present the, 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 the project. We just tell them what were the options in terms of uh, assessment. And from what I know, most of the assessment is, is formative. Most of the assessment is formative. Uh, there is a big discussion even about national exams. Uh, this minister abolished the exams. Uh, the previous one had exams in the fourth and sixth grade. This one abolished. Now it's voluntary. So I'm talking about national exams. But the schools do it uh, uh, in the formative way, mostly. That's what I know, and teachers uh, know about the assessment methods and the teaching strategies because we, we have this protocol with our official assessment agency that uh, provides training. We had um, 5,000 teachers already in 2015 as, as learners in these, oops, in these, learning, in these uh, training courses. But I, I can... Uh, let's say, forward your question to the person who was in charge of this training, she'll probably can help you more than I can. Because it's not my specialty. I, I, but I know that hasn't been done. If, if I answer one more question, can I keep the bottles? Yes? No? I don't know. Who's the, where are the organizers? Uh, yes? I wanted, okay. sorry. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask how many uh, teachers have really tried to use this tool in the uh, real work. 
I have no idea because the records we have on the web tool are just the hits and the uses. And in our final report of the project, that was more than 15,000. But we don't, we don't know because we did a lot of dissemination all around Europe. Uh, we had an European conference in Brussels, you know, all those things that the uh, European Commission likes us to do. But we have 15,000, about 15, the, the report that we sent to Brussels had about 15,000 hits on, on the web tool. But I don't know who's using it because we don't keep a record of that. And, and, and we, we are not, in, to be honest, we are not interested. What we are interested is in providing a tool that people can use. If they want to use it, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine also. Okay. No more questions? Thank you. Oh, well, there's one. Sorry. You have to wait a little bit. <laughs> oh, my God. We can share the bottles. Okay. So, go ahead. Fredo, um, yeah. So working? Okay. I actually have a whole bunch of questions to you. Um, I try we, to put it into one. We are one. in the same hotel, so that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but otherwise, I just want to challenge you in the public for one. <laughs> so, all these quality measures about assessment and so on. When you look at PISA, Germany is not really top there. But Germany is the strongest economy in Europe. Yep. So what does PISA us actually tell about the countries that's going on there? And um, so I'm, I'm really, I, I like the, analyt the, um, the assessment topic and I'm also thinking about how learning analytics could become uh, more, uh, formative and, and skip the summative assessment and so on, but I'm really a bit afraid that we make the kids and also us just test machines that right. are not creative at all, that never got to bloom level, the level where we want to, mm -hmm. and I see that wherever, especially in the Netherlands, it's just cognitive things and they don't really, really create being creative, being doing theater things and so on, and, and that's, that's, I find it actually scary. Yes. And um, what do you think about that? Well, I think that uh, that's a good question, first of all. Um, second, I, I agree with you. PISA is probably just on the first level of the uh, cognitive process, just on the remember, maybe on the second, on the analyze, I don't know. But um, they don't follow this. I mean, I, I don't think that uh, PISA tests um, ever looked at the revised Bloom or anything like that. I think it's just a test that the OECD uses. And um, I, I happen... I uh, happened, it happened that I know the education policy director of, um, of UNESCO. He was working on the OECD for, uh, before he was responsible for the open education resources uh, in OECD, Francisco Pedro. And um, I talked with him about the PISA test and the hey, hello. And um, in fact, it is what it is. So I think that they could improve the PISA test. The hey, hello, by the way, didn't work very well, precisely because it didn't address the other, probably, I don't know, it didn't address the other cognitive uh, processes. And um, uh, PISA needs to be improved, but it's what we have. We have to be realistic. That's what we have. And again, that's probably another business opportunity for somebody that wants to do proper assessment of competences and uh, go further and, like you said, incentive, uh, to make incentives for creation and for reflection and for analysis, etc. I agree with you, but that's what we have. Okay. I hope... <laughs>